following is a presentation of America's home for college sports. Live from US1 in Edison, this is the Chris Ash Show. Your chance to talk with the head coach of the Scarlet Knights on the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Tonight's show is brought to you by... To be a part of the show, give us a call at 1-877-384-1869. That's 877-384-1869. Now, let's go live to Quaker Steak and Lube in Edison to talk Rutgers football. Here's your host, Chris Carlin. Another terrific crowd on hand here at Quaker Steak and Lube in Edison for this week's edition of the Chris Ash Show. Chris Carlin. Scarlet Knight, Eric Legrandi. How we doing? Doing great, Chris. How are you? Doing very well. And, of course, the head coach of the Scarlet Knights is Chris Ash. Coach, good to see you as always. Good to see both you guys tonight. Well, we're uh, here, and we got a chance for you to talk to the coach. By all means, if you're here in attendance at Quaker Steak and Lube, you can phone, and we will get you on the air with Coach. You'll have a chance to talk to him. On the and we've already got a couple of questions in on Twitter, at Rutgers Radio or at RU Athletics. As we're on our vision, 1450 AM WCTC in New Brunswick, and of course on Facebook Live. And Coach, uh, the disappointing loss I know for you this past week uh, against Buffalo. You went back, you watched the tape, what were your takeaways? Well, R- Rutgers continues to beat uh, Rutgers, and uh, that's something that we've got to get fixed. Um, you, you know, we go 2 of 18 on third down offensively. And uh, when you look at the, the third down um, uh, lack of production, uh, a lot of times it's one guy here, one guy there that had a mental uh, breakdown, whether it's protection, a route, uh, a read, whatever. And uh, we've, we've got to start getting all 11 guys working together. And then, um, we had some uh, breakdowns in the secondary that uh, gave up some explosive plays that uh, were uncharacteristic of some of the guys that were involved, but uh, they happen. And, again, you can't give up explosive plays with mental errors and expect to win games. I, Coach, I remember back in 2008, um, my freshman year, being a young guy, we started off 1-5. and five. But I remember how much leaning on the leadership of the older guys to see them keep on going and keep on grinding. How much emphasis do you put on trying to spend with the older guys and the captains to keep these younger guys motivated and keep them going? Because I remember how much it helped me when we started off like that. Yeah, well, it does start with your older guys. And uh, I've, I've said several times that uh, we may not be – uh, big in numbers, but uh, we've got great quality with our older players, and uh, they, they've been through this before, unfortunately, and uh, they just got to keep working, and they, they keep sending that message and preaching that message to the young players. The good thing about our young players is they're just hungry, and uh, they want to keep working. They want to keep getting better. They want to taste success. Uh, Coach, when you, uh, first of all, let's look first half to second half, major difference in that game. Uh, defensively, Numbers were very skewed in the first half, 356 yards, I think it was in that neighborhood. Second half, only 69 allowed. What was the biggest difference there? Execution. Uh, guys doing their job, doing it consistently. Um, and that, that was it. And uh, that, uh, unfortunately, again, in the first half, uh, I, I can uh, recall you know, three explosive plays that were due, uh, that all went for touchdowns that were due to mental breakdowns. And uh, we didn't have those in the second half. And when you talk about the mental breakdowns and execution after looking at the film coach, uh, what is, is it just like a gap fit or is it just one person letting one guy, one guy go or lease in the coverage where they're supposed to have this guy or is it just – I'm asking pretty much after you see the film, what is it like? Yeah, well, uh, you know, they're all different. On Saturday's game against uh, Buffalo, they uh, were pass plays. They're explosive pass plays uh, that we let up. And, um, you know, it was one guy here, one guy there that, uh, you know, we were playing a lot of zone coverage uh, in, in the game. And uh, – uh, we'd either bust an assignment in a zone, in a particular zone coverage, and next thing you know, a guy's running free through his zone, and uh, that happened on three different occasions. 877-384-1869, 877-384-1869. Uh, you made a change of quarterback during the game, uh, try to jumpstart the offense a little bit. Well, your evaluations of both Art and Geo the other day. Yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't say that uh, either one of them uh, did a great job, but neither one of them did a bad job either. You know, it was a... 
a game we didn't throw a pick, you know, uh, finally. Uh, we, we've been really uh, preaching that. Um, but we didn't have a lot of production either. Uh, we didn't have uh, the explosive plays that we need to get. Um, and uh, when we made the switch, it wasn't because Art wasn't uh, doing what he was supposed to do or he had a bunch of turnovers and things like that. It's just we weren't really moving. We weren't having a lot of production. And sometimes, you know, a, a change of, of uh, a personnel can, can spark something. And unfortunately, uh, it didn't, um, you know, to the extent that we were uh, kind of hoping. We had one question on Twitter in relation to that that came in earlier. Again, you can uh, tweet them at Rutgers Radio. This came from Nick Zimmer. Uh, Coach, um, when it comes to the quarterbacks, have you considered using art in certain situations and geo in other situations to accentuate their strengths? Uh, you know, we, we haven't up until this point. Um, we've had those conversations if, if that would be the best thing to do. And, um, you know, right now I, I think Coach McNulty um, – you know, kind of feels that would not be the best thing to do. But uh, we've had those conversations. Um, and, again, you know, the quarterback position is, is unique. When the offense isn't working, it's not having the production that you want, everybody looks at the quarterback. Uh, but there's so, it, there's so much more than that that, that goes into it. And uh, that's our, our issue right now. Um, you know, uh, we're not doing things consistently enough in protection. We're not running the ball consistently enough at the end of the game. You know, we've got decent yards, but it's not consistent enough. And we're not, uh, you know, getting the production that we want. And we end up in third and long a lot. Um, and then, uh, you know, you're forced to protect longer. you got to, uh, you know, run more routes. And uh, things just aren't working out together with all 11 guys on the same page. And, Coach, when you listen to Art, he sounds very mature. You know, he just knows you got to get better. we got to execute, you know, just the simple things of just execution, going out there and doing your job. When you, get, when you talk to him, Coach, how do you keep his confidence up and just know that, you have to go out there and just handle your business. Well, I think you said it best when you hear him talk. He is a very mature individual. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a young player, you always worry about his confidence when things haven't necessarily gone uh, like he had hoped. But uh, Art is very confident in himself. Uh, he knows where he is at as a, a young player. He knows what he needs to work on. And he just needs to continue to do it. Um, you know, playing quarterback is uh, – a lot of like driving a car. You know, when you first get your driver's license and you drive on the back roads, it's pretty easy. Then you get out on the freeway and there's a lot of stuff moving fast. It's not so comfortable. It's not as easy. Uh, things come easy in practice. It, it's game reps uh, where things move a lot faster. And you got to look at things a lot differently that he just needs more reps at that. Uh, your receivers, you talked about them uh, at length in your press conference the other day. Is there a common theme in what you feel like they need to improve in to win more routes, to give more opportunities to your offense? Well, a lot of it depends on what t style of defense that we face. Uh, you know, some weeks we'll face zone uh, coverages, and, and they, they need to understand the types of zones and where the voids are in the zones and where to sit down and, th and things like that. Other weeks it's press coverage, and we get pressed a lot, uh, play a lot of man-to-man, -man, and, and it's the ability to be able to get open on press uh, corners or, or press DBs that, that are in their face. So um, it's, it's a lot of different things. And, uh, when we do take some shots down the field, having the uh, ability to go up and get a ball. Um, been doing this a long time, and, and if uh, you don't have receivers that uh, are able to go up and get a ball over a defender, it's tough to get the explosive plays. You're not going to always throw things open all the time. Eventually, you're going to have to go up and get a contested ball, and unfortunately, we have not been able to do that yet. And I want to talk about another position on the offensive side, too, is the tight end position. You know, Jerome Washington seems to be a guy who can get separation down the field, and he seems to be a little bit of a spark to make a big play. You know, how about a little bit about his effort and also Travis with Spoke, like trying to get him more involved in, in uh, the passing game as well? Yeah, I would say Jerome's probably had his best uh, two games here this, in the last mm -hmm. two weeks. Uh, may not look like it with the offensive production, but he's really uh, started to, to come on. He's, you know, he missed all of spring. Um, because of the shoulder surgery, but he's really starting to improve and feel more comfortable with the new offense. You know, he didn't, he wasn't getting any reps in this offense until training camp. So it took a while. That learning curve has taken uh, longer, but he's really starting to get comfortable with his assignments and what he's doing. He's blocking better. Uh, he's gotten more receptions here in the last couple games. So that's a, a positive. Uh, Travis Vokalak is, is still a young player that has some strengths and some weaknesses, and we're trying to get him more involved. Uh, hopefully we will as we continue to go forward this year. And Davon Robinson's a guy that you've been using an awful lot this year. Where have you seen improvement from him? Uh, really in the past game, uh, he's an athletic uh, kid. Uh, he's kind of a, a tweener still right now. Uh, he, he's been a wide receiver. He's never played the tight end position until he got here. Uh, he's going to continue to grow and get bigger and get stronger. Um, he's never blocked like we're asking him to block, so that's probably the, the biggest area that he needs to improve in. But he's got great hands. 
Uh, he's really good in the pass game. He is still unsure about what he's doing because he's only been playing this position for a few weeks. Um, so his best football is ahead uh, of him, and as long as he keeps working and we keep working with him, he'll, he'll improve. Another guy that seems to be a spark to the offense is Isaiah Pacheco, Coach. Is there any time we'll see him maybe carry the ball a little bit more and try to you know, see him out there in, in the games in the first, second, third quarter, try to get that offense going as well? Yeah, you know, it seems like every time he does go in and he gets his balls on, uh, gets the ball in his hands, that something positive happens. And uh, when you got players like that, uh, you got to find ways to move, um, get them in the lineup, and, and give them opportunities. And as we go forward, again, I guess you know the, the thing that we do have is Raheem has been playing well. Uh, Ron uh, Hilleman has been playing uh, well, and then uh, when Isaiah goes in, you know, positive things happen. We have to find a way to get the ball in all three of those uh, young men's hand, hands more. We've got our first question, and it's our old friend Jim from North Brunswick. He is here and ready to go. Jim, what's up? Hey, Coach. How are you? I'm great. Coach, I have a deep back question for you. So I hear he's a corner, but he's not a safety. He's a safety, but he's not a corner. What do you look for in corners? What do you look for in safeties? What's the difference? You know, well, how do you see it as an XD back coach, uh, the difference between the two positions? Well, a, a lot of it depends on your scheme and what you're asking them to do within your system. Uh, for us, corners are cover guys. Uh, we do want our safeties. We have two different styles of safeties. Uh, we've got our two corners that we want to be athletic, long guys, quick guys, loose hips, um, athletic. Uh, they can go up and, and, and have good ball skills, uh, and they can tackle. And then at safety, we want some bigger guys uh, because they're going to be more involved in the run game. Uh, our field safety, because of the spread offenses uh, in today's college football, really needs to be a bigger corner. And we, we really recruit corners to play safety and, and try to develop them and get them bigger because they've got coverage skills. Uh, our, our boundary safety is more of an in-the-box guy, more of a run guy that we want to have a little bit bigger size, a little stronger, a little more physical guy. Thanks, Coach. Good luck this yep. week. Thank you. All right, Jim. We'll take our first break. We've got more questions from people here at uh, Quaker Steak and Lube in Edison. If you're in the area, we're here till 8.30 tonight. By all means, come on by. Also, later on, we'll talk about a young man who uh, earned a special honor this week on this football team and can still achieve a little bit further with it. And... Rutgers special teams coordinator and tight end coach Vince O'Crew is going to stop by as well. We'll talk to the assistant coach in just a little bit. Stay with us. This is the Chris Ash Show. Best tailgate? It's got to be right. A nice cold Coke. Real football. Y pollo asado. Hoops and wings. It subs. Nah, hot dog. No, Dodger dog. I'll drink to that. Pass me a Coke. It's got to be crawfish. Mac and cheese. No, seven layer dip. Ribs. No contest. Hummus. Um, what? You need a hot grill and an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke, come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day, race day. Calls for Coke, you know it. It's tailgate 101. When we take care of our own hearts, we're also taking care of the people closest to us. So it's comforting to know that RWJ Barnabas Health has New Jersey's most comprehensive cardiac care program with access to top specialists, minimally invasive heart surgery options, and rehabilitation and wellness programs. So get your heart checked. It's as easy as visiting rwjbh.org slash heart. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. The Chris Ash Show returns after this local timeout. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lube. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2.50, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the best wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison. 732-777-WING. This is Cabell Philpott, host of the Nissan College Football Blitz. Heard every Saturday from noon until midnight Eastern on TuneIn.com and the TuneIn app. When there's a big play, a momentum change, and that possible upset happening, not only will we let you know, you'll hear the scores as they happen live. Catch all of the action as we count you down to the college football playoff. It's the Nissan College Football Blitz. Saturdays, noon until midnight Eastern on the College Sports Now channel on TuneIn.com and the TuneIn app.
We have returned. It is week five of the Chris Ash Show here on Wednesday, September the 26th at Quaker Steak and Lube in Edison. Our telephone number, 877-384-1869. You can tweet your questions at Rutgers Radio. And if you're in person, by all means, come on up and ask a question. And that's where we will start this segment. Ma'am, what's your name? Where are you from? Marie DeGoulis. I'm from Freehold, New Jersey, class of 75. How are you? I have seen a lot of good, bad, and ugly football. We are not in the good category right now, obviously. And you have a disgruntled fan base. We hear from you that you said they have a lot of energy, everybody's working hard, um, they're doing well in practice, yet the product we see on the field isn't quite matching what you're saying. So is this a case of the information you're getting on the film is not accurate? Is this a case of you didn't have the they're just not asking, what is going on that's not getting us to where we should be when you have said repeatedly, we are going in the right direction. We're exactly where we should be in year three. Well, you know, I, I did say that, but I said that a while ago. That there have a lot, been a lot of things that have happened uh, since I've said that um, and, and where we're at today. Um, a lot of things, and I'm not going to go backwards and, and uh, uh, go back and discuss those. Uh, but to, to your point, is we, we have had some really good practices. Um, each week I feel like we have great practices and we keep getting better. But when you go out on a game field on a Saturday, the opponent has something to do with your performance. Uh, in practice, things aren't as fast. Uh, you script uh, a lot of things so uh, the players see things differently in practice. And when you get out in a game, the opponent, it's faster, they're bigger, uh, their calls are different, things move differently. And it takes a lot of time and reps and uh, really experience to be able to re react uh, to what you see on game day. Um, I think and that's what we have to get better. I think everyone agrees that's true of an Ohio State and others, but that doesn't explain a Buffalo. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I mean, uh, we got to play better. That's it. Appreciate it, Marie. Thank you. Thank you. All right. A uh, couple more coming in on Twitter. This one's from Jeff. Uh, Coach, this has been talked about a, a lot this week in particular. Um, you mentioned the number of players from the 2014-2015 recruiting classes that are no longer on the roster, guys that would be fourth and fifth year players at this point. Uh, is that a primary reason or a big reason for when mental mistakes come into play when you have inexperienced guys on the field? No, no it has nothing to do with it. Um, uh, you know, the, that... that comment that I talked about in the press conference had nothing to do with where we're at in, in the uh, way we play right now today. It has nothing to do with it. Uh, it has everything to do with uh, uh, lack of seniors and, uh, and upperclassmen, but it has nothing to do with uh, the way we play on Saturdays and has nothing to do with the depth that we have right now. It has The uh, only thing it has anything to do with is we have a very small senior class, a very small group of upperclassmen. That's it. Um, you know, uh, mental mistakes and, and uh, fundamental issues that we have on Saturday has nothing to do with it. Hey, Coach, I know you just mentioned that you have these, these you know, a lot, a lot of noise coming from the outside and things like that. And when you lock in with these guys, I mean, when you come in with a game plan and you have a lot of young guys, how is it you tell them to not focus on what's going on and what you hear around campus, things like that, and just focus on their job and what they have to do? Well, you can never, you know, you can tell them that, but they'll never, you know, stay away from it. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's too many uh, outlets Social out there. Social media many, now, yeah. exactly. You know, um, you, you mentioned there's a lot of noise. I, I don't know what people say. I don't. I, my job is to coach our football team. That's all I do. Uh, when you're going through a tough situation, I've learned this a long time ago, whether it's a good situation or a bad situation, don't ever worry about what anybody says. Just go do your job, and my job is to try to coach the football team to get better. Uh, and in times like this, you know, uh, I, there's no reason to, to look on social media. There's no reason to look at it because it's all negative. And, and I'm not a negative person. Uh, I want to be very positive. Uh, and my focus is on our players and our football team and our preparation. And that's it. So, you know, we talk to the players about trying to block out uh, stuff. Uh, but it, it's not real. It's not realistic. They walk around campus and, and uh, they can hear a lot of stuff all the time. When they have to go through that, is that kind of a bonding possibility for them among themselves to, to hey we we have to the only ones that can fight through this are is us uh it, it can be a good uh, thing or, or a negative thing it's all uh, based on the, the type of individuals that you have on your team everybody responds to stuff ne uh, differently and we think that we have tried to train our players uh to respond to negative situations w with a positive attitude 
and uh, go back to work uh, mentality and uh, make no excuses for uh, where we're at. Uh, just go to work. There's no other way to get better and improve and, and get to where we want to get to other than just work. Uh, complaining about it, uh, listening to negativity, that's not going to get you anywhere. It's a waste of time. Uh, it's a waste of energy. And uh, the, more, uh, the fewer people in our program that worry about that stuff, the better off we'll be in the long run. I was going to ask, is there anything specific that you got to change maybe in practice or things like that just to put the more focus on working and getting better and not trying to get distracted or anything that could come from practice and things like that? Uh, you know, we've, we've changed a few things in practice. Uh, I think I've, I've talked a, a lot about our, our lack of depth, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of things that have happened that have caused us to have some depth concerns on defense. And because of that, we've backed off on some of the good on good things that we do in practice because we could not, absolutely could not afford to get certain individuals hurt. We have nobody else. Um, but uh, to get better, we have to go back and do more good on good and uh, just try to practice safe and, and smart uh, and make sure that we protect guys the best we can. But the only way to get better is during the week you have to go against other good players and you got to do good on good work. And if you don't, uh, you, you don't improve the way you need to. And that's really where we're at right now. More questions coming in on Twitter. Uh, this one is from Steve, Coach. Uh, Raheem Blackshear, you can see the explosiveness. Considering the weapon that he is, uh, will you potentially use him more as a wide receiver than a running back? Uh, we are exploring all types of options to get the ball in his hands. He's not the only one. Uh, Hilleman, I, I mentioned already, and, and uh, Isaiah Pacheco is another one. That, uh, they're all three players that we have to try to find ways to get the ball in their hands. Uh, if that means they're at running back or they're at wide receiver, uh, we'll, we'll look at all those options. We already have. I mean, he's, he's been all over the field. But, um, you know, I'm not going to give away any of our, playing, our, our game plan uh, ideas for, for this week over the radio. But also, Coach, when you, when you talk about getting it in their hands, is it happening them also having to learn a new position? Like if you line them up at a wide receiver or if you line them up, you know, in the this, in this slot, things like that, do they have to actually learn that new position or is it just like wrinkles that you put into the offense? Well, I mean, I, I do think some people probably think it's easier than it actually is. Exactly. Um, you know, when you're trying to ask a player to learn all the plays at running back and then, oh, by the way, here, let's put you out at receiver mm -hmm. and learn all the things you're going to need to know out at receiver. Now we got to condense it and make them, you know, smaller packages and limited plays that we can put people in different spots. But the more volume that you ask them to, to uh, learn, uh, it can slow them down if they're not really a, a football intelligent individual. Raheem, thankfully, has a lot of a high football IQ. Uh, he can learn a lot of different things. He just gets it. Uh, but not every player is that way. 877-384-1869, our telephone number for Coach Ash. Also, come on up front and ask a question if you're here at Quaker Steak and Lube in Edison. And uh, also on Twitter, at Rutgers, or at Rutgers Radio and at RU Athletics. Uh, another one of those from at Let's Go RU. Coach, can you explain the mantra, the hunt, and how it applies to the team this season? It's, it's a mantra that you've been using since you've been here. Yeah, it's, it doesn't just apply to the season. It just applies to everything that we do every single day. It's about our attitude. It's about our effort. It's about our uh, consistency. It's about just being persistent in our pursuit to be the best that we can be, uh, both in practice and games and, and uh, in, in the classroom. Uh, and then... Uh, Finishing what we started, you know, we, we're going to finish every rep, finish every practice, finish meetings, and uh, that's really what it is. It's, it's just our mindset, it's our, our attitude, it's our approach to our work uh, in our program. We've been talking a little, bit, a lot about the offensive side, but I want to give a little bit of spark to the defensive side, who's been, a, I mean, the spark for your defense, and that's Mike Tverdov. Can you talk a little bit about how he's been able to be, you know, productive out there, and he's been throwing into a role and going out there and executing? I, I absolutely love Mike. Uh, Mike's uh, you know, redshirt freshman. Uh, I think he's going to be an outstanding football player here. He's really gotten bigger and stronger in, in the last year, and he'll uh, continue to do that as he goes. But uh, what I love about Mike is he just loves the game of football, and he plays the game so hard. He practices so hard, and everything that he does is about trying to be the best that he can be. And uh, you know, if he keeps that attitude and that approach, he's going to have a, a lot of uh, really good looking games uh, you know here during his career but uh, he right now is really working on his pass rush skills um, he's uh, getting better every single week with his pass rush and, and we need him to and what I really like about Mike he's really selfish he's all about the team you know what what position we started Mike in and what he's in right now uh, today are not the same positions um, we had a need because of injuries um, at, a, at a, our jack position which is kind of a hybrid uh, outside linebacker slash D lineman and uh, we made a switch, and uh, he's picked it up and has done a, a great job. And, it's, again, it's just all about the team. 
and whatever he has to do or whatever he can do to help our football team, he's willing to do. Another guy that's, that's really made an impact as well as Ellen Lamour uh, from Tackles for Loss, a couple of sacks this season. Uh, has it been more of a physical growth for him, or is it just kind of an, a, a total aspect of the game uh, in the way that he has improved in making those kind of splash plays on defense? Yeah, all, all the above. Um, Ellum was a guy that came in here, uh, I don't know, probably about 210, 215 pounds. He's 240-some pounds now. Uh, he's gotten bigger. He's gotten stronger. Um, he's gotten faster. Uh, and he's also learned the game. He's, he, we, we put him in a position. We, we kind of changed our defense for guys like him, and we put him in a position that fits his skill set, and uh, he really excels at it. One other thing, too, is a couple of the linebackers specifically. We've talked about uh, Tyreek Maddox-Williams quite a bit. Um, you know, I don't know that we talk enough about Deontay Roberts and Trevor Morris because these – have just been consistent guys for you in terms of making tackles. They're consistent. They're they're always at the top of the Big Ten uh, list, always in the top 15 or so. Uh, and now at this juncture in their careers, their growth, their development, how your defense can kind of turn to those guys right now as being a couple of the elder statesmen on that unit. Yeah, their their growth and development has been really drastic over the last couple of years. Uh, we, we go back and, and actually laugh about you know, what they look like back in 2006. When I say we, my, myself and them together, when they we watched themselves from uh, 2016, they're like, man, look how small we were. You know, we had no idea what we were doing. And uh, where, where they're at right now, uh, just uh, overall understanding and knowledge of, uh, of our defense and offensive uh, formations and sets and, and how uh, people like to attack. It's just uh, uh, remarkable to, to look back uh, how, on how far they've come in development physically and mentally. And then just as leaders, too, they've done a great job of trying to lead uh, our football team, not just their position, our defense, but the football team. And it's been, really been fun to watch their growth. I, I want to talk about some of those younger guys now as you talk about growth. How has Fatukasi and also um, Tyson Fogg, how have they been able to adjust and learn these new offenses and just be able to go out there and let the game come to them and let it be a lot slower than, as you said, driving on the highway when you first get your license? Yeah. Uh, o 03, as we call him, um, has done a great job. I, I think uh, – you know, last year he was just a special teams guy, did a great job on our, our kickoff coverage team. This year uh, he got bigger, he got stronger. He really worked hard in the offseason to increase his flexibility. And uh, he missed last uh, game, uh, or the, excuse me, the, the, the Kansas game, came back this week um, and, uh, you know, did some good things against Buffalo. But he's a guy that's got a lot of pass rush ability too uh, that we need to continue to develop uh, to help our defense. And uh, he's, a, he's a role player. He, he plays uh, – three different positions for us um, and uh, he's been fun to watch also uh, his growth and, and the maturity since he's been here and his best football is ahead of him and then uh, Tyshawn Fogg's the same thing he's gotten bigger and stronger uh, we need Tyshawn to continue to you know learn his position uh, and uh, start to get some more productive reps to take some reps off of uh, Trevor Morris at times uh, but uh, I still think Fogg is going to be an outstanding football player here uh, as we go forward. All right, Coach, we'll give you a little bit of a break, and then we will visit with Rutgers special teams coach and tight ends coach Vince O'Crew. He's going to stop by here in a few minutes. We'll have the coach back in just a little bit to talk about one of his players who has earned a special honor and has a chance to go on and maybe do some even more special things. We'll get to that in just a bit. First of all, though, it's time for our upcoming Rutgers athletic events for you presented by MGM Resorts. We've got a lot of action on campus this weekend. Women's Rowing taking on Columbia Saturday morning, 9 a.m. We hope to see you there. Big thanks to MGM Resorts for sponsoring our upcoming events. As a proud partner of Rutgers Athletics, MGM Resorts invites you for a night of endless laughs at the Borgata Comedy Club all week long or treat yourself to seeing the Bay Atlantic Sympathy, uh, Symphony on September 29th. Visit theborgata.com to see all the entertainment experiences MGM Resorts has to offer. We'll take a break at Quaker Steak and Louvin Edison. This is the Chris Ash Show. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Louvin. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just 250, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the best wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison, 732-777-WING. When you think sports, think McGettigan's, the official watch party location for Rutgers football in the Premier Irish Bar in New York City. 
Enjoy our watch party specials with $10 buckets of wings and $5 Coors Light beer buckets and great weekly specials such as Beer and Burger Mondays, Taco Tuesdays, and Ladies Night on Wednesdays. Located at 70 West 36th Street in Midtown Manhattan, the Gettigans is close to some of the city's most iconic landmarks, such as the Empire State Building and Madison Square Garden. So when you think sports, think the Gettigans. The Chris Ash Show returns after this local timeout. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. When we take care of our own hearts, we're also taking care of the people closest to us. So it's comforting to know that RWJ Barnabas Health has New Jersey's most comprehensive cardiac care program with access to top specialists, minimally invasive heart surgery options, and rehabilitation and wellness programs. So get your heart checked. It's as easy as visiting rwjbh.org slash heart. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. Best tailgate? It's got to be burgers. And an ice cold Coke. <laughs> Real football. Y pollo asado. Hoops and wings. It subs. Nah, hot dog. No, Dodger dog. I'll drink to that. Pass me a Coke. It's got to be crawfish. Mac and cheese. No, seven layer dip. Ribs. No contest. Hummus. Um, what? You need a hot grill and an ice cold Coke. Of course. Football and Coke. Come on. It's got to be Coke. Game day? Race day. Calls for Coke. You know it. It's tailgate 101. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Chris Ash Show here at Quaker Stick and Lube in Edison, New Jersey. And we want to remind you, you're watching on Our Vision and on Facebook Live, and of course on 1450 AM WCTC in New Brunswick. Chris Carlin, along with Eric Legrand, and joining us now is Rutgers Special Teams Coordinator and Tight Ends Coach Vince O'Crew. Coach, always good to see you. How are you? Well, I'm doing fine. Doing fine. Uh, let's start with your special teams, and we'll get to the tight ends in just a little bit. Um, first thing, just right out of the gate, we've talked to Coach Ash about it a few times. Last year, this team was so good at covering kicks, one of the top teams in the country. And you've got the new rule this year. We haven't seen too many other teams against Rutgers uh, use it for the fair catch. Um, in the Ohio State game, we used it quite a bit. Just from your standpoint as a special teams coach, the impact of that rule on the game so far from what you've gathered through four games? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. We're, we're still seeing what's going to happen. I, I think there's certain opponents that, uh, you know, the first uh, week of college football, nobody used it. Every game I saw, they were still returning kicks, and I think people started to figure out, well, we're the kind of team that's only going to get it to the 20-yard line or 22-yard line, so why not take uh, the free pass to the 25? I think we're still learning as we go. And I think the other thing that you're going to find is it, it's easier – to signal a fair catch, but is it better? You know, if you signal a fair catch, you're not going to get it past the 25. It eliminates the chance for a big return. And I think at some point in time, that's got to be a, a philosophical decision. Hey, we're going to take a chance and see if we can't return a big one. And when you when you coach that, do you tell the returner, hey, if you feel that you could get a big one here, go for it, or you just go right out there and say, hey, we're going to fair catch this one and just well, take it right at the 25? You know, obviously that, that, that's Coach Ash's decision. But, you know, we got two guys back there that when we're huddled on the sideline ready to go, uh, Raheem and uh, Pacheco both are like, you know, coach, let us go, let us go. So with that kind of uh, mental makeup, I think we'll try and do it more and more as the season progresses. Do you like the rule? No. <laughs> Why not? Uh, I think it takes excellence away from the game. If you have a, an excellent player, why not let him be an excellent player? Yeah. I mean, why, why put uh, restrictions on people? You know, why diminish the opportunity to see a big play uh, simply because, of, you know, of that rule? I, I, I don't agree with the rule, but uh, – you know, then again, nobody asked me either. So. Well, uh, the, uh -huh. the guy sitting next to you, I think, uh, feels uh -huh. the exact same way as you do. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. I, I'm, you know, I'm all about the kickoff team. And I actually wanted to ask you, through four games so far, how would you say the production of your kickoff team has been as well, you watch them on film? You know, it w once again, uh, number one in the Big Ten Conference. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and you know, that, that baby falls in uh, the hands of the head coach. He's the, he's the head coach and also uh, the unit leader for the kickoff coverage team. But anytime you're number one, you know, that's a great place to be. Uh, from having younger guys on special teams uh, on all your coverage units, uh, what are the, the big fundamentals in special teams 
that younger guys have to learn early if they're going to get on the field, have to be able to do early if they're going to get on the field? Well, they have to have awareness to leverage the football. You know, we tell them always keep the ball on their inside shoulder, and sometimes you'll get a young guy that's running down there and, you know, he'll start to weave around and get big eyes and lose his eye discipline. We always want to keep the ball on our inside shoulder because if everybody does that, you'll never lose contain and you'll eventually get to the point where you can bring the ball down. Uh, I think the second thing with the young guys is, I think Coach talked about it earlier tonight, um, as you practice and as you prepare and everybody goes where they belong, and all of a sudden you put a bunch of uh, people in the stands and the speed of the game goes so fast that sometimes a young guy who thinks he's really going fast gets out there and finds out what fast is really like. <laughs> uh, it is. It, it, it's, it's a learning process. And there are certain young men that do it, and they do it the first time, and they're fine. And there's other guys, you know, the, the number of reps it takes to get comfortable with it varies from individual to individual. Well, I wanted to ask you about the punt team, Coach. And we'll switch it up from kickoff and we're going to the punt team. Has this been a learning experience for you also with the Australian type kicks and different different types of way he kicks and yeah, rolling yeah. out in a rugby uh, style? A, a huge learning experience. This guy is, um, number one, he's, he's very athletic. Uh, number two, he, he can place the ball almost anywhere he wants to place it. He can roll his right and kick it left. He's got a kick that starts to go down in the middle of the field, and then it, it kind of rotates off to the right-hand side. Um, and to be very frank, you know, we're still learning how to use that weapon. Uh, mm -hmm. it, we adjust our coverage lanes. We adjust our protection. Uh, and, again, you know, it's in a young body. He's a true freshman. So as we grow and get more comfortable with him, it should be able to expand what we do. Yeah, that, that was kind of what I was going to ask off of that is how do you use him to accentuate the strengths of your coverage team? Well, it's, it's more in where we place the ball. Um, you know, we've gone from a traditional two-gunner or two-wide outlook to a three-wide outlook because he can put the ball so many different places that we want to have an extra cover guy uh, on the field. Uh, the second thing is, is I think he's a, a guy that can drive the ball and, and kick it beyond the returner if, if the situation calls for it. So you know, it's still a little bit of a learning process. Uh, the hardest thing with him, I can't understand a word he says. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, wow. You know, he, he really is a fantastic young man, and, and, and we're very fortunate to have him on the team. How did you find him? I mean, how did that come about? Well, you know, if you watch college football, you're going to see punters from Australia sure. all over. So it, it's a deal where, you know, we had a guy that we coached uh, prior whose coach in Australia said, hey, you need to look at this guy. He's willing to come over to the States. And, you know, it's a big deal to play college football for some of those guys. So, uh, you know, we, we approached it. We recruited him. He came. He liked it. And I guess the rest is history. And he had never played football, period, before, the, before this, right? Well, you know, I, I'll tell you what's unique. When, when you recruit an Australian who's going to be a punter and you watch him kick the ball and you go, man, this guy's really good. The next question is, can he catch the snap? Right. Because they don't catch snaps. Right, right. So, you know, one of the, one of the conversations I had with uh, his coach there was, I need to see him catch a snap. So they took a jugs machine and set it on the ground and shot him the ball. And he, you know, he caught, he's a very, very, very good athlete. Um, but, you, you know, you never know what, with that distance and what, you know, what you're going to get. So it was interesting that we uh, made a commitment that we were going to go in that direction. And the last thing we want to check out, could he actually catch a snap? We're, of course, talking about the punter, Adam Corsack. Yeah, and I wanted to ask, as now protecting him, have you found it easier where when he rolls out that you don't have to have as many guys drop back? Or are you able to free release more as you do that punt? I think we're able to free release more. I mean, with him on the move, you know, whatever side he's moving to, obviously his right because he's right-footed. The guys on the left side of the formation have no chance of making that trip to block the kick. So it, it, it's easier, I don't know, but it, it seems to happen a little bit faster for us. You know, it's funny. Um, you have him, and you have now Justin Davidovitz, who we were just talking about the kickoff coverage team from last year, and he was a big reason why. He seemingly was very good at kicking it high and placing it right on the goal line. A, a big reason for that. Justin's development, now he's your primary kicker all the way around, and three for three so far. Uh, tell me about Justin as a young man and how he's really uh, started to step into this role and thrive. Well, I think it goes back to what Coach said earlier in the show. He's, he's matured. He's grown up. It's experience. Um, the, I think the, the actual uh, kickoff duty is, is a challenging duty the way we do it. You know, prior to the rule change, we did not want to kick touchbacks. We wanted the ball dropped in the field of play, and we challenge you to try and return it against our coverage. And I think that's a challenging thing, and I think uh, Justin rose to the occasion. 
I don't think a year ago, if he would have been kicking field goals and kicking off, he would have been as uh, efficient at both as he was just doing one. So he's matured. He's worked hard in the off season. Now he's very comfortable doing both. And, and actually, he's been hitting the ball well the last couple of weeks. Well, I know the defense is out there for this play, but it is considered a special teams play. And that's field goal block. And you were able to block one this year and return it for a touchdown. So yeah, that, what was that, that like? Yeah, that, that was a beautiful thing. I mean, I was standing there and I went, wow, I think he got it. And then the next thing, it started rolling around. And I saw him running the end zone. I said, you know, those don't happen very often. <laughs> and, uh, when we met on Sunday, we, you know, we made a point to put that up for the whole team to see the video because that, that is a special play, and, and that could be a game-changing play. Especially when you got a lot of offensive linemen out there as well, Chase. Yeah, exactly. Chase yeah. Yeah. Uh, confirm or deny this rumor that maybe at the end Deontay needed a little help for those 10 yards on that run. I uh, will deny that. <laughs> <laughs> but even so, for a special teams coach, is that the ultimate when you block a kick and you have a chance to return it? Is I, that the one that? Yeah, I, I think, you know, we talked about it earlier. The other one is, is uh, a punt return or a kickoff return. You know, you want to get the, you want to get the entire stadium on their feet, return a punt, you know, because it, it, it's a long play. It's a 10, 12, 14 second play. And if you return a punt to the house, you know, it's going to bring the fans to their feet. I think kickoff's the same way. I think the blocked kick is an exceptional. It doesn't happen very often, mm -hmm. you know. And, and there are there except are except here. Well, you're right. Uh -huh. You're right. Uh -huh. um, and in our statistics that show, if you block a punt or you block a field goal, you're going to win a high percentage of your games. And then there's a now you new young guy that we just saw this past weekend who looks very comfortable back there on punting. That's Avery Young. Oh, he looks like he yeah. can catch it. And yeah, he's, he's looking right. He's ready to shoot out of a cannon. So how excited are you about him? Very, very excited. I think we found a real deal there. You know, he's when you look at him to go out and catch, he's calm. He's like, yeah, coach, I got mm -hmm. it. And he had no, uh, obviously he's got no fear. And he had no uh, no trouble adjusting to finding the ball mm -hmm. and catching it. I, I, that's been a, a great addition for us in the return game. Rutgers special teams coach and tight ends coach Vince Okru, our guest on this week's edition of the Chris Ass Show. So let's talk about your tight ends. A lot of three tight end sets in this offense. First of all, I I'm sure from your standpoint, you got to love that. Yeah, I think I think it's a uh, it's a fun offense to coach in. It's a fun offense to play in. And you know, when when you're in a, an individual unit room, the more guys that play, the happier the room is. And there are yeah. times that John, I mean, we have two in most of the time. Sometimes three. Uh, so, it, you know, it's fun to come to work. It's fun for the players to be involved with that part of the offense. Uh, you know, and, and, and it's been a lot of fun. Is it hard to teach them all the different shifts and motions that come with the offense? Because when you're lining up, you start up at maybe a bunch set, but you're motioning over guys, and then somebody else coming across back on the defense. How hard is that to coach and teach them that? Well, I, I think Coach Ash, you know, referred to that earlier when we talk about experience and, and, and how you progress and where you get successful. A perfect example is, you know, Jerome Washington's a fifth-year player. This will be Jerome's last season of college uh, participation. And for him, it came easy because he's been around football. Uh, Coach also mentioned Davon Robinson. You know, he got in the game quite a bit this last week. This is the first time he's ever done something like that. Mm -hmm. And in three or four words, you can, you can put out formation, shifts, motions. Oh, and by the way, we're going to tell you what the play is. And all these words come out. And in practice, uh, when it doesn't go quite as fast as it does on game day, it's easier for him to think about it and process it and go out and do it. Then all of a sudden, again, you, you know, walk into a stadium and there's a bunch of people in the seats, and all of a sudden this stuff is really going fast. And that, that's just an experience. That's, that's the learning curve that uh, young teams have to overcome or learn to accomplish to be more competitive on Saturdays. Travis, uh, last year we saw him come on late in the season. What have you seen this year from him so far? I, I think he's matured. You know, I mean, he, he's in a bigger body. He's stronger. Uh, he still has... Uh, catchability catches a lot of balls you know the, the deal for Travis right now is he's, he's trying to be the complete player at the tight end position both a blocker and a pass receiver and and quite frankly he's got work to do as a blocker but you know he's he's six foot six he's only 240 pounds and and that's a 40 pound increase from when he got here yeah. so you know once he you know he's playing a position which is new to him uh, this is only his second year playing a position but he's also in a brand new body you know he came at us he was 208 pounds so now he has to carry 32, 40 more pounds. So it takes time to acclimate to that, and, and I think he's getting better at it. What does the ideal Vince O'Crew tight end look like? Travis. But, I mean, also size-wise. Yeah, you, I mean. Would the, you want to have him at 250? Is yeah, 240 I, I would, where he's no, happy? No, no, I, I would think that the number one thing for me or, or what we look for is length. You know, um, you can get him bigger. You can get him stronger. You can even – you know, work on their speed to, to improve their speed. But when you have length on the football field, 
it makes up for a lot of things. I mean, you, if you watch Travis run some routes and catch some passes, they're passes you or I couldn't catch. You know, they're, they're, they're just too far for us to, you know, for our wingspan, for our, our, our reach to pull in. Um, and, and I think at that position length, uh, especially when you're trying to block the edge of the defense and, and, the, and the defensive end's already aligned outside of you, he's already got an advantage by alignment. Uh, I think length is, is a big part of what we're looking for. Well, when you get these receiving tight ends coming into this offense, how do you get them motivated that they have to actually run block a lot in it? Tell me, ain't gonna throw them the ball if they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, you know, it, it, I tease you, but it's it's part of what we do. And, and no matter what level you're at, you're gonna have to block. But you know, I think what's interesting is this position, even at the NFL level, there are a lot of teams that have former collegiate basketball players mm -hmm. playing tight end. So it, it's a demanding position athletically. One of them's going to the Hall of Fame, and Antonio Absolutely. Gates. Yeah. Absolutely. And and I, what is he like? Fifty years old, and he's yeah. coming back for another, <laughs> back for another it's year. It's amazing. So yeah. uh, the athleticism is is obviously top on that, and they all have to block at some point in time. Uh, Jerome Washington, how does he look to you this year? Um, is he a guy that's going to play at the next level? Um, I, I think that's yet to be determined. If he continues to play like he is, he'll have that opportunity. Uh, you know, I heard Coach earlier say, you know, Jerome missed spring. And there was a time in fall camp where he hit a little bit of a lull. You know, and, and I was concerned about it, as was Jerome. It just seemed like he – actually seemed like he was tired. And so, you know, we sat down, and, you know, we talked man-to-man -man about it. And, and then it dawned on me, this is really the first time in, in multiple years that he's gone through a full training camp. And so there, there was a little bit of, of a lull there. And then I thought uh, he struggled from time to time in the Ohio State game. Um, Good players, you know. He struggled a little bit from time to time, but these last two games, he's really played well. And in this offense, as you guys have already noticed, there's a way for John to find John to find a way to get him the ball. He can do that. So we're looking for uh, you know bigger and better things from him. But I think he's had a good uh, last two games. We're looking for him to have a good game this weekend. And Davon Robinson, he may not have the same length as Volkan, but he's an athletic guy too. How excited are you well, for his development? You know, I, I tell you, I got to watch him play in a state championship game for football and. You know, he, he rushed as a defensive end. He strip sacked the quarterback, recovered a fumble. They went on offense. They threw him a go route for a touchdown. And then when they kicked off, he made a tackle on the kickoff. And uh -huh. I was like, you know, there's got to be a place for this guy to play. Huh. And, and again, you know, real young body. You know, he's, he's played uh, four college football games in his whole life. Not the same length as Travis, but incredibly athletic. And he'll be able to do anything we ask him to do from an athletic standpoint. Eric always wants to know, you know, you've been here three years now. You're, you're a Buffalo guy. You've been, you've coached out in so many different places. Where's your go-to food spot? Man? Do you have one around here? Um, he always wants to know. First I of all, are you a wing guy being right. a Buffalo guy? Uh, yeah, I am a wing guy. Okay. I am a wing guy. Well, this place is pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. Um, I don't believe he said that about you, that you're a food guy. I, oh, come on now. Come we're, on. we're all food guys up here. I just saved them the chance. That, well, we're both food look, guys, look, clearly. I mean, <laughs> look, at the, look at the profile here. I mean, that, that's, we're not hiding anything. All right, so maybe, you know, Better a little for radio than the kettle TV, black, right? Yeah. Yeah. As I'm chugging my milkshake between breaks over here. <laughs> oh. Well, listen, Coach, we appreciate you coming by, and uh, best of luck this weekend. Thank you. I appreciate it. Vince O'Crew, Rutgers tight ends and special teams coach. Coach Ash will rejoin us. In a moment, we'll preview the Indiana matchup this weekend. This is the Chris S. Show. At Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, caring is more than a job. It's our responsibility as a business leader and as citizens of this state. Through the Horizon Foundation for New Jersey, we're committed to working alongside those who share our goals. We're caring for our neighbors by supporting programs that help them manage important health issues. We're connecting people with health education that's easier to understand and accessible to all members of our diverse communities. We're creating inspiration by supporting arts and cultural programs that entertain, illuminate, and enrich the lives of our citizens. By sharing our time and resources, we aim to be not only a better company, but a better member of the communities where we work and live. Visit us at community.horizonblue.com and learn more about how the Horizon Foundation for New Jersey is working to support organizations that make New Jersey healthier. The Chris Ash Show returns after this local timeout. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. 
Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lube, Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2.50, and the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar. The game and call 732-777 Wing. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the best wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison. 732-777 Wing. When you think sports, think McGettigan's, the official watch party location for Rutgers football in the Premier Irish Bar in New York City. Enjoy our watch party specials with $10 buckets of wings and $5 Coors Light beer buckets and great weekly specials such as Beer and Burger Mondays, Taco Tuesdays, and Ladies Night on Wednesdays. Located at 70 West 36th Street in Midtown Manhattan, the Gettigans is close to some of the city's most iconic landmarks, such as the Empire State Building and Madison Square Garden. So when you think sports, think McGettigan's. We have returned to Quaker Steak and Lube here in Edison for this week's edition of the Chris Ash Show. Chris Carlin, along with Eric Legrand and the head coach of the Scarlet Knights, Coach Chris Ash. Want to remind people this weekend, it is RU Brewfest at the Indiana game, and this is a pretty good deal right here. $50 ticket gets you entry into the RU Brewfest and the football game. The Brewfest is located in the Block R Party from 9.30 to 11.30. Season ticket holders, they can purchase uh, Brewfest tickets for $25. They're going to have over 30 different craft beers, Oktoberfest, and New Jersey breweries on display, and live music from the Benjamins. So, again, that's $50 gets you into Brewfest and the Indiana game, 930 to 1130, at the Block R Party this weekend. Uh, all right, Coach, you've got this matchup with uh, Indiana. We'll get to that in a sec. But I also want to mention uh, some news that came out in the last day or so, uh, actually earlier this morning, and it involves Zach Heeman. How about this? Zach Heeman, Rutgers offensive lineman, named a semifinalist for the Walter Campbell Trophy, which is awarded to the best football scholar athlete in the country. That's got to be pretty neat for you to see that happen. It's, it's great for him. Uh, we did a team exercise during training camp, and uh, – we went around the room and, and uh, had the players pick uh, other players on the team and asked them a question. If you could get 10% of any player's future salary for the rest of your life, who would you pick? And most of the guys picked Zach. Really? Yeah. Really? And wow. it's a, a huge, huge uh, um, tribute to him, uh, this uh, uh, potential award. But just the, the way his teammates look at him and perceive him uh, is pretty special. Well, it was awesome news to see, and Rutgers has had uh, one other player win that in, in the last uh, 12, 13 years. I believe it used to be called the Dratty Trophy, and Brian Leonard won this award uh, back in 2006. So we wish the best for Zach. He's now a semifinalist, and we'll see how this plays out in the coming weeks. But, I mean, it sounds like I'll take 10% of the salary, too. I, mean, yeah. I had to guess. <laughs> I'm sure you're doing all right yourself, but uh, Zach's going to be successful down the road, w without a doubt. Uh, all right, match up with Indiana, Coach. Uh, give us kind of a thumbnail sketch of the Hoosiers as they come to town. Well, you look at them defensively. I would start uh, with teams defensively. Uh, they're aggressive unit. They blitz a lot. Play uh, Right now they try to play a lot of man-to-man. -man. So, uh, again, our, our keys to victory are the same. We want to be able to run the ball. We've got to do that better. Uh, we want to be able to get some shots down the field. Uh, we have not done that. We need to do that. We continue to work on trying to get that done. And then we've got to protect the quarterback. On third down, they're going to blitz a lot. We've got to protect the quarterback and try to take advantage of some of their man-to-man uh, that they use. Uh, offensively, they're a spread offense. They try to utilize tempo. Uh, tempo. Uh, they do run the ball in their, their play action team also, a lot of RPOs. Uh, so, you know, defensively, we have to do a great job of stopping the run, and then we've got to limit explosive plays. And as you said, RPOs, Coach, how hard is that? Thing now? It seems like that's what all, uh, all teams are doing. It's going to that RPO type offense. How is it now coaching against that and trying to defend that? Because in the beginning, it was very hard for, you know, just to an adjustment, but now Starting to, a lot of people start to see week in and week out with that. Yeah, it, um, there are a lot of challenges with it. It's about numbers. It's about space. Um, and, uh, you know, when you can run the ball well, and it, it really opens those things up. And um, it allows you to, to really um, neutralize your offensive line a little bit because they're run blocking instead of pass blocking. And, um, you know, you've got guys sucked up on the run, and you're, you're taking advantage of uh, uh, an aggressive uh, defense by, you know, throwing the ball out uh, into space. So I, I think they're good plays. 
uh, and uh, they're tough to defend. We'll take one more time out, talk a little bit more about this matchup in just a moment. We'll return in a second on the Chris S. Show. Traffic. It can be more stressful than that last second Hail Mary pass, but Nissan changed the game. Nissan Rogue has available Nissan Intelligent Mobility, like ProPilot Assist, that can start and stop in highway traffic all on its own and help keep you centered. Nissan Rogue. It's a game changer. Get to Nissan, proud supporter of college athletics. ProPilot Assist is an available feature and cannot prevent collisions. Always monitor traffic conditions. Keep both hands on the steering wheel. See owner's manual for safety information. Need a place to watch all the pro games? Look no further than Quaker Steak and Lube. Best Wings USA on Route 1 in Edison. 50 TVs, great game day specials starting at just $2.50. And the best wings in the USA with over 25 different wing sauces. Enjoy our outdoor patio and bar open all year round. On the way to the game and need something to go? Give us a call, 732-777-WING. We cater events of any size. Watch all the games, have a great time, and enjoy the best wings in the USA. 561 Route 1 in Edison. 732-777-WING. The Chris Ash Show returns after this local timeout. This is the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. At Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, caring is more than a job. It's our responsibility as a business leader and as citizens of this state. Through the Horizon Foundation for New Jersey, we're committed to working alongside those who share our goals. We're caring for our neighbors by supporting programs that help them manage important health issues. We're connecting people with health education that's easier to understand and accessible to all members of our diverse communities. We're creating inspiration by supporting arts and cultural programs that entertain, illuminate, and enrich the lives of our citizens. By sharing our time and resources, we aim to be not only a better company, but a better member of the communities where we work and live. Visit us at community.horizonblue.com and learn more about how the Horizon Foundation for New Jersey is working to support organizations that make New Jersey healthier. All right, quickly, let's get a phone call in. We've only got about 30 seconds for Vic in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Vic, you're on the Chris S. Show. Yes, good evening, Coach. I have a two-part question. Number one, do you anticipate any RU roster or position changes because of the NC2A redshirt rules? And number two, do you uh, foresee any uh, wholesale poaching of, uh, of players from other teams? Uh, you know, I'll, I guess I'll try to answer the first one about the NCAA redshirt rules and roster changes. Uh, no, don't anticipate any roster changes due to the redshirt rule. Uh, I've been asked uh, about that several times, and our philosophy is to continue to evaluate the players that help give us an opportunity to win every Saturday, and uh, we're doing that uh, right now. So we're not really uh, looking at redshirting some of the players that have been playing so far. Um, in terms of uh, poaching other players off other rosters, uh, it's not legal. Uh, so, no, we don't anticipate uh, doing that. Well, uh, Coach, finally, you know, you talked about the keys to victory here. Um, you've got some real good, you know, you, as much as we've heard of some of the negative, you've also had a lot of positivity in terms of the people supporting this program, program kind of rallying around it, too. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a, a lot of people that show up to our uh, practice, our facility, uh, been around our team a lot. Uh, some are there, you know, every day or every other day. Uh, they, they see what we're doing. They see the uh, enthusiasm of our players and uh, very supportive about the process and understand that uh, this is a difficult time in the process, uh, but uh, they see it. Uh, uh, so we, we have a lot of uh, positive supporters, uh, a lot of positive uh, messages and feedback that we get from a lot of people every day. Well, Coach, good luck this week. Looking forward to Saturday and getting a win over Indiana. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, look forward to seeing you guys next Wednesday. Good luck, Absolutely. Coach. He will see you then. Yes, sir. All right. We want to thank our producer and engineer, Paul Schrager, getting it done as usual, Colin Osborne and Tim DeMartin on our vision and on uh, scarletknights.com, and Haseem Phillips and Jimmy Gill from our sports information office. Once again, uh, it is Rutgers in Indiana this Saturday, noon, right here on BTN and on the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Have a great week, everybody. 
You've been listening to The Chris Ash Show on the Rutgers IMG Sports Network. Join us throughout the season from Quaker Steak and Lube on US1 in Edison to hear from the head football coach of the Scarlet Knights. The Chris Ash Show has been brought to you by... The Chris Ash Show is an exclusive presentation of IMG, America's home for college sports.